In this video, I find more gunk in the coolant system for my K1500, and I demonstrate how to use a no-spill coolant kit. Well, I am back in the garage with the truck again, and hopefully this will be the last time I drain the coolant because I am ready to install the heater core and put this thing back into full use. So I'm going to drain the coolant and see what it looks like. To get up to speed on what started all of this, check out the videos in my K1500 playlist. I'll put a link in the description and I'll try and throw it up here on the screen. I mean, it may be hard to tell, but... It's not clear as water, but it's pretty clear. Definitely not murky like it was last time. Now, so I'm gonna let that drain and I'm gonna install the, um, the heater core. So the water coming out of the overflow was a bit more murky. So I'm gonna rinse it out because I'm pretty sure that that is just residue from the bottom of the overflow. And as I suspected, there is still gunk in the bottom of the overflow. So that does not bode well for the rest of the coolant system, but all the other water looked very clear. So I'm gonna take this off and clean it out. I did. Then make me in it. Because you don't like them. My wife likes waffles, but it's like, it's like 11.30. Who eats waffles at 11.30 at night? Not from Waffle House. You know what I mean? And they're not even real waffles. They're like made with oats, bananas, almond milk, salt, and bacon, bacon powder when I think to put it in. It was getting late, so I decided to leave the cleaning for the next day. But I did want to mount the heater core before I stopped for the day. I am going to install the new heater core and the, the two ports are going to go back through the, the holes in the firewall there and the heater core will live in the same spot the old one came out of. So let's see, it's going to be awkward to get these camera angles. I'm going to fish them through. There we go. Now I just have to fasten it. So this little bracket or brace is what holds the heater core up on the other side and it is held up by one of these screws. So I'm gonna put it in and then I will show you exactly where it went. I tried to do it blind, but that was not a good idea. Cause I need to be able to see it. All right, so I think that's in the right position but I believe it's supposed to snip, sit a little more snug up into the plastic. I'm gonna play with it a little bit, see if I can get the seat a little better. But that is the little hook or bracket and the screw that holds up the side that is away from the inlet and outlet port. So that's all that holds it up before you put the plastic on. Let's see if I can convince myself that the heater core is positioned properly. Hot right, dog. Looks like I'll be able to screw everything back in. So I don't need, I don't need to put this cover on quite yet. But I think, yeah, I think that's good enough. Yeah, I think that'll work. So I'm just gonna leave that there. And I am not gonna connect the heater cord just yet. Still gonna make sure that all the, the gunk is out of the coolant system. We're almost there. So here I am on the side of my house. I decided to clean out the overflow tube and look, it's still flowing nasty and it's not flowing that well. So this tube has a lot of that gunk in it. So I'm gonna see what I can do about cleaning it out. Since I know this hose is plugged and it will save me a trip to the store to get a new one, fired up the compressor, and let's see what happens. Yeah, it's coming all back on me. So it is pretty plugged up. See if I can find a way to put a better seal on that. 
All right, so I got a, a coupling on here and here. I'm gonna see if this holds it better. Uh, it still wants to come out. That's it. After messing with the hose for a little while, I realized it would be quick and cheap just to go get new hose. So I went to the auto parts store and got some new hose. So I'm just gonna cut it to length. The OD is a little larger than the original, but I think I can make it work. And of course I bought a lot extra. All right, that'll work. So I'm gonna install this on the car, I mean on the truck. Then I'm gonna cut this open. I wanna see what it looks like. On another note, cleaning the reservoir went pretty well. I mean, I wouldn't drink out of it, but that's clean enough to install back in the truck. I'm not even sure if this clamp will fit, will fit over this one. Damn, it does not want to go on. Damn, that's a really, really tight fit. All right, so I got better leverage over here. Let me see if I can get this bad boy on. That's a pain. But it's what I'm working with now, dadgummit. All right, so I muscled it on, and I don't know, if I ever do this again, I'm just gonna order the right type of hose, but sometimes you're stuck with what you can find quickly, locally. I mean, it'll, it'll do a great job at working. It's just hard to get on. Now this clip, which was normally on the truck, won't close. So now I'm gonna go find another clamp. So I rummaged around a parts bin that I have and I found a clamp. I mean, as tight as this is, I probably don't need a clamp because this is actually at zero pressure, but I'd rather be safe than sorry, right? I uh, threw a little worm clamp on. Okay, this is so tight that I probably don't need a clamp again, but just, just in case. Now that went on the way it should. And because of what I found in the reservoir, I'm not gonna loop the, the heater core back into the system quite yet. I'm gonna run it one more time, maybe a month or two, because we got several months of warm weather still, so I don't need it. And then at some point I'll come back and loop it in when it gets too cold for me. And I'll probably be hitting up a junkyard and see if I can find one of these. But I'm going to build the system up and I'm gonna bleed it with a new tool that is long overdue. I should have bought it a long time ago. If you've ever replaced coolant in a car without one of these, it can get messy. And that's what I've done my entire life for you know, the last 20, wow, last 20 years or so. But um, comes with a funnel. And basically, this is just a, a little reservoir slash funnel that sits on top of the radiator. And it allows you to burp the system with an excess of coolant mix up here. And I think this is gonna be pretty cool. How does that work? Oh, so that's a plug. So when you're done, you can stick that in and go away with it without spilling stuff. That's pretty cool. Let's see if I can get it to work right. So after some fiddling with all the parts that came with it, this and this is the right combination for my truck. So this actually seals on the same spot that the radiator cap will seal inside the radiator. So you sit that down. And then you line up the tabs just like on the cap. And there you go. And then, let's see. And then it's on this truck, I guess we could just put that directly in and it seals like that. Now they have other connections, but I don't think, I don't think I need it. I'm gonna double check. Yeah, this works. They have extensions because this should be the highest point when you're bleeding it. But um, yeah, this is pretty cool. It looks like it'll work. So I'm gonna start. So I've already put in roughly a gallon of water. So now I'm gonna put in the, the coolant, I mean the antifreeze concentrate. Now I used to mix them outside of the truck 
but the water pump does a great job of mixing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and... Ooh. So far there is no... There's no leaking, it seems to be sealing pretty good. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't loop the heater core in just yet because there is a little, just a slight tint of that reddish color still coming back. So I'm gonna go start the truck and let it ride. So while the truck is idling in the garage, I'm gonna cut this old tube open to see what was plugging it up. I have never seen anything like this. Oh my God. Wow. So, I really, I'm gonna ask some more questions about the history of this truck, cause that is, I'm surprised it ran as well as it did. If you'd seen one of my previous videos, and pay close attention, you would notice that I had trouble with fluid going back and forth between the overflow and the radiator. And this is why. I thought there was a leak somewhere, but no, there was a blockage. I have since learned that this is common with Dexcool if it sits for a long time, but I've also heard that it happens if you mix it with other coolants. Well, I was optimistic because of the way the water looked the last time I, I drained it, but it looks like I still have quite a bit of flushing to do because that does not look the way I want it to. So I'm gonna let it cool down and drain it again and 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 again. I am tired of doing this. Now in a perfect world, that'd be completely clear, but I gotta put the truck back together. I gotta get it out of here. I got other things I need to do. And I know this will be okay for a while, especially since I'm not gonna hook up the heater core. So I'm gonna put distilled water in it and some coolant and let it run. I caught some of the, the flush water in this container and it's it's pretty clear I'm just gonna go ahead and throw some coolant in it yeah but I've convinced myself that there is no more debris or grit that's gonna come out of there and it's just a matter of how clean I wanted to get the flush water and I mean it's clean but it can be cleaner so I'll flush it one more time before winter and I think I'll be good so it's the next morning and the truck is all the way cooled off and the coolant has contracted fully and you can see it's still above the filler neck. So I am going to show you the cool little thing they have for you to remove it. So if I understand the way this works right, I put this in, then I wiggle this off. Come on. <coughs> that didn't go how I planned. <coughs> it is sweet. Damn, let me go wash up. All right, let's try that again. Mm. <coughs> so if this works the way I think, this plug goes in here and last time I made a mess but if you hold this there you go and then you should be able to pick this up there's no leak so now I can get a funnel and pour the rest into the overflow tank and it also came with, with this funnel
So now I can take this off, put the original cap back on, and now fill up the coolant reservoir to between the minimum and maximum mark. So this is a mix of water and coolant. And let's try not to make a mess. So I cleaned up, buttoned up the truck, and I'm gonna drive it like this for a little while while I take care of some other things on the Golf and the Civic. And I cannot wait to tear into this thing. But that's it, I'll see y'all next time. If you would like to follow along as I continue to improve my 89K1500, hit subscribe. If you'd like to see the work I've already done, check out the playlist. Thanks for watching, take care.